All right, 16.3, <clears throat> day number two. Uh, we're going to talk about a different type of area function today. Uh, yesterday, or in the last lesson, we talked about the disk method uh, using this area function pi r squared, which ended up turning into pi times f of x squared in most cases. Uh, today, uh, what we're going to have is a new area function. You might recognize this from geometry, but this is the washer method. Typically what you'll see with the washer method is some function and another function that are both involved in the revolution or the rotation. So example, let's, uh, let's just sketch real quick. Let's say this is f of x. And here is g of x. All right, let's do g of x actually in green. All right, so we've got f in blue and g in green. Well, if I wanted to uh, revolve this cross section or the uh, the enclosure between those two graphs um, around the x-axis, let's say. we would no longer be creating um, a solid, right? There'd be a hole in it. So for example, uh, then my graph, as I revolve it, would look like this. And I'd have, at any given point, I would have this thing that from geometry that you might recognize as the annulus. So instead of a circle like we had yesterday, we now have this thing called the annulus. And the formula for the annulus's area is pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. So to find the volume, we would take pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. So that's our formula for today. So let's do a washer method example. Okay, uh, let's sketch these out. Okay, so here I have a graph of my two functions, y equals square root of x and y equals x over 10. Um, and it looks like I want to cut that off at x equals 4. Okay, so uh, let's see here, x equals 4. So first let's find out where these two graphs would meet. So the square root of x equals x over 10, just to be sure of where we're at here. Um, so I'd square both sides, so I'd get x equals x squared over 100. So I would get x squared equals 100x. So 0 equals x squared minus 100x. So that looks like uh, at 0 and at 100. Okay, so the graph of this isn't going to be uh, to scale, that's for sure. But uh, that would be the point where those two graphs meet. I'm just limiting that. I'm cutting it off right here. Okay, so that means, and of course 4, like I said, is not that's not symmetrical. But let's say that we revolved it around the x-axis. That was decent. So what I would be doing then is creating an annulus just like that all the way down all the way down and the size of the radius and I want to keep consistent there the size of the radius would keep changing well, what would big R equal? Big R would be the length from the x-axis to there. 
that value would be f of x. So big R equals f of x, the upper function. Little r would be this distance right here. And little r would be, uh, let's call it g of x. So let's assign f of x to the square root of x and g of x to x over 10. And let's build an integral and find that volume. So we're going to take the integral. Don't forget pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x, which is the square root of x, minus g of x, which is x over 10. We can't forget, though, we're going to square these. And honestly, like if you want to, you could simplify it. Put it as 0 to 4 of x minus uh, x squared over 100, if you wanted to, if you just wanted to simplify. Either way, your calculator will do the work for you. So let's go ahead and use the calculator to find the volume uh, of that. All right, so the answer that I'm getting is uh, 63.063 units cubed. Now, in your calculator, a lot of calculators have a shortcut where they have a little box here and box here. And then it gives you, you know, what do you want inputted here, da-da-da, and then with respect to what variable. Okay, so of course we would put a zero here and a four here. I would save this function, this right here, I would save that as y1. And just type in y1 squared, right, and then dx here. And that'll do all the work for you. It will output this answer for you using, of course, math nine. Okay, here we are. Uh, we got two functions here. Uh, let's call uh, this one g of x. Let's call this one f of x. Okay, so let's graph them. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy to graph g of x. g of x is x squared. Okay, and f of x, we could do a little work on, but we would get y equals plus or minus the square root of 8x. Okay, so the positive portion of that would look something like this. Okay, where this is f and this is g. Okay, so we're going to be revolving the area between those two curves. Well, we need to know these two points then. Okay, clearly this is x equals 0. And this we just got to work to find. So let's go ahead and find that. I'm going to set these two functions, I could set them equal, which in this case wouldn't actually be that smart, but if y equals x squared, then y squared equals 8x, I can do a direct substitution of x squared in for y. So that would be x squared squared equal to 8x, and now I can find my value for x hopefully. So x to the fourth minus 8x would equal 0. Factor out an x, I get x cubed minus 8 equals 0. So here we go, I see that x equals 0, or 2 cubed is 8, therefore that would make that 0, x equals 2. All right, so I see x equals 2 here, I see x equals 0 there. Now I just gotta set up my integral and go from there. So I'm gonna go from 0 to 2, pi times uh, big R squared. My upper function is F. So if I square this, right, uh, it's not going to matter whether it's positive or negative. So I'm going to go just with positive root 8x minus lower function, which is G. So X squared squared and all of that DX. So if you want to make this easier on yourself and go from 0 to 2, you could just enter in one function and call it 8x minus x to the fourth and dx. So I would type this in for y1 and simply do uh, integral from 0 to 2 times pi right, of y1. I don't even need to square it, dx. 
All right, so I'm going to see if I can come up with an area there by using my calculator. Looks like I get an answer for my volume of revolution of approximately 30.159. Of course, if you would, like, uh, don't get that confused, please, with the fact that here I've got, you know, this area. That's not the area there. That, that is the volume when I revolve it. All right, when I revolve it around the x-axis, right, as I add up all these areas, I get that volume. All right, so that would be units cubed. All right, let's move down and find the volume of the solid created by rotating the region about the y-axis. Okay, so basically now I'm just changing my upper and lower functions. Okay, so... Um, I got to do a little bit of work here. I got to get x all alone. So uh, f used to be f used to be uh, what is it? Uh, y equals or let's start where it began. Y squared over excuse me. Y squared equals eight x. I want to solve for x, so I get y squared over eight. And for g of x, g of x was y equals x squared. So now uh, g would be the square root of y equals x. All right, so now you can imagine that uh, I'm revolving this around the y-axis. Therefore, um, you know, any one of my disks here would look like this. Okay, so big R in this case, we're going to flip them. Big R is going to be G and little r is going to be F. So I'm going to take the integral from 0 now to the Y value. Right? I knew the X value before was 2, but I knew the Y value. So that point there is 2 comma 4. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4, big R squared, which is the square root of y now, minus little r squared, which is y squared over 8 squared dy. So simplifying, I would rewrite, make it easier on yourself, and call this y minus y to the fourth over 64 dy. Then go straight to the calculator. All right, so volume that I'm getting, according to my TI, is 15.079 units. cubed. All right, that is uh, the washer method. I think that's it for today. Nope, we got one more. Oh, fun. All right, let's do one more. I'll sketch them out, and we'll come back and look and go for it. Okay, so the first thing I got to do to get a representation of this is to somehow get a picture of what this function is going to look like. So I'm going to square both sides, uh, which would give me this, which actually is helpful. So I get this, x squared plus y squared equals 4. What that is is that's a circle with radius 2 centered at the origin. So radius 2 centered at the origin, but I want it bounded by the y-axis, right? I want it bounded by the y-axis. So it's this function on the y-axis, let's say the positive value. So the graph of this would be a half circle there. Okay, but I want to revolve it around the line instead of the y-axis. I want to revolve it around the line x equals negative 1. Okay, so let's look at what this shape would look like. Okay, here is my um, area that I'm going to revolve. And I want to revolve it around this line right here. 
So that means that the graph is going to show up again over here at x equals negative 2. Alright, so then the shape will show up again right there. So there'll be this gap, right, in between. So you can imagine that, again, I've got a washer method here. And this is what the washer is going to look like. So it's revolving around that. So I'm creating the solid. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and take a moment. And I want you to try to construct the integral that would evaluate to give us the volume for this solid. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think about is what is big R? And what is little r? Well, it looks like little r will always be 1. Big R will always be whatever our x value is minus a negative 1. So we're basically adding 1 to whatever our x value is at any given point along here. All right, here's all my x values. But then I'm going to add this 1 to it. Right? So I'm subtracting negative 1 to add that extra portion to big R. Okay, so what is big R then? Let's let's come up with the formula for it. Big R, of course, if, if this is x, would be the square root of 4 minus y squared minus a negative 1. So we would say plus 1. So that'd be big R. Little r, like we said, would always be 1. So we can construct our integral. We're going to take pi from 0 to, excuse me, from negative 2 down here up to positive 2 up here of big R squared, which will be the square root of 4 minus y squared plus 1, that's big R squared minus little r squared, which is 1 squared. Again, we're integrating with respect to y. And that right there, we would go straight to the calculator. I would probably, if I were you, just so I didn't screw anything up, type this in as y1, type this in as y2. Okay, and okay so uh, using my calculator, I get 72.988 units cubed. Uh, that's it for uh, washer method. Tomorrow we'll do uh, our last lesson of the chapter, and then we'll move on to chapter 8.